Like, I think people think too much inside the box of real estate of like, what's typical earnest money or option money. And it's like, none of that matters. Uh, we could, for example, uh, you know, if you, if you try to get a loan with the bank, if you own more than 20%, you got to sign on the loan, right? And maybe you don't want to do that. And so we could own, uh, on, on paper, you could own 80% of the deal, right? But like someone else gets 90% of the cash flow and then 90% of the proceeds when you sell it. Like you can structure things. Welcome to the Freedom Chasers podcast, where we bring you interviews and discussions that share the stories, successes, goals, and dreams of real estate agents and real estate investors pursuing a life of purpose and freedom. All right, guys, today I get to interview Matthew Typke, and I'm going to be talking with him about how he grew his brokerage to over 170 agents and even has a lot of people that are unlicensed that they're working on deals together. This is a brokerage that provides real agent services, but is specializing on helping their agents go into investing. I couldn't think of a better person to interview. We're the Freedom Chasers podcast, which is designed to help agents and, and people in general invest in real estate so they can have greater financial freedom. And this guy is all about creating the financial freedom of his team and his people in ways that I'm really excited to share with you. Matthew, thank you so much for coming on the show. Let's talk about it. Like what shifted your focus from traditional brokerage and agency to we should all be investing? Love it, man. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. What's up, everybody? Man, really, um, just to kind of get into the background a little bit, my mom was a single mom and she ended up, by the time I was 17, I think she had like 14 or 15 properties. And it was a slow grind, right? Like one per year, sometimes she would do two. And so I grew up around understanding the value of real estate, owning it, and also what's required to do that. A lot of sacrifices that are involved. And I got my real estate license with the goal of owning and being an investor. And so what happened was, I mean, I'm 13 years in now and being in the business, really wanting to be an investor and running into certain obstacles with different brokerages of, hey, you can't do this, don't think this way, and kind of running my head against the wall on having to pass on opportunities other than just making a commission. So it started as me wanting to do that and then realizing that most brokerage, if, if not all, don't really support being an entrepreneur and inquire and, 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 and uh, doing acquisitions and you know, building a generational wealth portfolio. And so I just was like forcing that into existence. And then I realized this is me. I know that there's other people that want this. I know that there's a niche for this. Let's try really hard to cater to that and make this much easier. And I look back and man, there's so many lessons and stories, but if I would have had the structure that, that we put in place, I, I, I really believe that I'd own like 10 times as many properties. I mean, we're giving people, you know, our balance sheet, my phone book, like every connection you need, you know, here, here's my bank statement. If you want to make a cash offer, we'll sign on the loan. And I didn't have some of those things and that's no complaint, but we are putting that in place where you can really, you know, you could do your first deal and do a, a 50, 80, 100 unit apartment complex as your first deal because you have us supporting, backing and, and actually us wanting to do that with you. So this is humongous. I mean, obviously the value to the agents that you bring on, but it's no joke to be able to be what we would call a, a key principal in a deal of 50, 80, 100 units, right? So you've built substantial net worth, um, if that's the case. So kind of take us, take us into that. Like, what was the process that you built? I mean, your mom did obviously 14 properties as a single mom. That's wild. Um, what was your journey like? Yes. I mean, and, and I just want to touch on that real quick is... I believe this, this is uh, the business that really can can change your trajectory, your family's trajectory more than any that I'm aware of. You know, you can do it in tech and banking or whatever, but like real estate, if you play it right, it's almost guaranteed, right? It takes a long time, but you minimize your mistakes and like everybody can do it. And the I, I, reason I say that is my mom was literally cleaning houses when I'm, I was uh, born in Ohio, but I moved to Austin when I was three years old. And I really believe this and I've seen it. She did it. Everybody, if they really commit to it, could buy one property per year. And in 15 years, you got 15, right? And from the outs outside, they're like, that's crazy. But that's totally possible and doable. You know, you, if, but you got to sacrifice, right? Like you got to save your money. 
You can't buy nice, fancy things. You, everybody can save 10, 15 K if they're really, really committed and they're not watching Netflix. Right. <laughs> so like, it's all possible. Um, so my mom did that. And then I got my license when I was uh, in college, my sophomore year of college. And my whole goal was I want to learn everything I can about being a great agent. I want to see how other people do it. I want to help other people do it. And along the way, I'll figure out how I can do that myself. So that's been a journey, man. I mean, I got my master's degree in real estate. I uh, was an appraiser. I did apartment leasing. I tried to, to experience all different aspects of real estate uh, to have a really well-encompassed approach to being a true real estate professional. And I, and I say like, you know, there's a, there's a language, there's a lingo in real estate that a lot of people are in real estate, but they don't know it. And, and you got to know, like, I'll just throw things out there, like internal rate of return or net present value, uh, time value of money. You got to understand these things to be able to be in rooms with people where you feel confident that you can add value and not that you're just in there to, to put yourself in the middle of a deal. And that confidence gives you the ability to be a professional. Um, and then it's just a matter of time, right? Like the snowball uh, of real estate, everything gets better every year. It's a matter of time until something happens. And as you know, and hopefully listeners know, one deal can change your life, right? And I heard this the other day, I just want to throw this out there and, and I believe it. It's like, it depends on how committed you are, right? Like if you were to go to a hundred people that are in jail and you're like, if you, if you, you can get out of here in a year, if you make a million dollars, most of them would probably do it, right? Because they wouldn't think of anything other than getting that accomplished. And so it becomes a uh, intentional growth, like organic growth. You're just doing what you do. You grow like this. But when you're intentional, it starts going like that. And real estate is the, the best way and the only way that I know that you can really uh, build generational wealth, almost guaranteed if you follow a process and certain steps, but by no means is it easy. And by no means does it happen overnight. Like, I mean, we, we own 127 properties uh, and did, by no means does that mean that like I can just retire, right? We got taxes, debt, maintenance, like it's a, it's a grind. But 20 years from now, hopefully if I, if I stick true and I follow these principles, be massive cash flow every single month and then I'll give that to my kids. Uh, just like my mom, right? Like she always said, this is going to be for you guys. And, you know, when I was younger, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be great. But like, no, like those are still being paid off. Right. And so there's no secret to it. And I, I just love it. I, I believe that real estate can be for everybody. And for me, it was residential agent. I got into commercial as a master's degree at a and I worked at a commercial brokerage called Edge. I did retail tenant rep. And then long story short, in 2020, I started my brokerage. I, I found a partner. Uh, I'm a big believer that real estate's a team sport and that you don't want to do anything on your own. And so I, I'm very blessed to have a good partner. And man, it's just been a hustle. I mean, we, we yesterday I looked at 13 properties and it was interesting because, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm going on a, a tangent, but I just, I just love real estate, man. But what I'm seeing in the market right now is there's a, a massive amount of deal flow, but not a lot of deals getting closed. And so what I'm trying to do is go constantly see these deals, get in the game, understand what's happening and be patient until there's the, the right one. I think right now, the only deals to be doing are, are steals. Like you should only be doing deals that are absolute steals right now. That wasn't the case six months ago, uh, but there's just opportunity everywhere. If you really get out there and you get around the right people and you hustle, and that's what I've always tried to do with real estate. So let's talk about in the early deals you were doing, was it like make a lot of money as an agent, save cash buy the deal? What was the process that way? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, I, you know, I think there's value. I think when in real estate, you want to talk numbers, but my first year I made, I think 12,000 or 13,000, it was two or three deals. And that blew my mind because I was, uh, I was working at Papa John's delivering pizza, making like five, $600 paychecks. And I got this $6,000 paycheck and it blew my mind, man. Never seen a check like that. Um, so my goal was be a great agent. You know, I made 13, then I made 30 and then, uh, maybe like 40 and then I graduated. So, and then I moved cause I was in Corpus Christi. I moved to Austin. But my goal was to make as much as I could uh, 
on commissions. And then I wasn't really overthinking, you know, get this great deal on the investment side. All I was thinking was get a deal, get real estate ownership, right? And so it started with just, just start building a balance sheet. Anything I can own, own it is how I thought about it. And it kind of comes full circle just to give you the, the core focus of our business. We say in and on, make money in and on real estate, in on commissions, on on the ownership side. And it just gives you that ability to adapt as you run into these opportunities like I was talking about yesterday. Maybe I, maybe I broker them, maybe I buy them. Uh, but if this is valuable for people getting started out, my opinion was just own anything. Get something on the balance sheet to be able to go to a bank and say, I got, I got a property, right? And then it gets easier and easier to just snowball that into now getting into multifamily or small commercial deals. So you're getting started, you're, you're buying some properties. Obviously you started building a brokerage. How do you work with your agents? So give us a sense of, they bring a deal to you. How do you structure it? Yeah, I mean, I still believe that there's, there's ways to structure things that I've never even thought about. I mean, I really try hard to keep a super open mind. But for example, if, if a wholesaler brings us a deal or an agent brings us a deal, we say, this is your deal. And, and I'm very passionate about this. I, I want people to own real estate because it can change their lives. And I want to do that with people if I can. But I say, this is your deal. Uh, what do you prefer? Do you want us to just give you advice? That's great. Uh, do you want to buy this deal with us? Great. Um, and then it just comes into structure and how much capital do you have? What's the plan? Ideally, everything we buy is, is long term. We, we keep forever. Uh, we'll always have an open mind to sell. But We'll own 10%, we'll own 50%, we'll own 90%. You know, if we're just going to sign on the loan, you know, maybe take 10 or 15% for that. And then other than that, uh, you you just take the ownership based on the capital that you bring to the deal. Uh, we've done deals with people where they, they said, hey, I have no capital. And I said, that's no problem, man. You know, I really want you to own, I, I do. And maybe selfishly too, it's like, if, if you bring me a deal and I get you to own it, most likely we're going to go do more. Right. And all of a sudden I got, I got 10 with you and 50 with this guy and hundred with this guy versus me just, you know, getting a quick wholesale fee to you. And what I've realized is that most, in my opinion, most people that are wholesaling, they're wholesaling to, to make a, a amount of money that is the down payment for their deal. So why not just get the deal now? Right. Cause that is possible, but we've done deals where they put up no money and they just pay us over time. And, you know, maybe it comes out of the deal. Maybe they, they take out a loan from us. Not greedy there, uh, but just trying to get the assets, get control of the assets. We like to uh, own more than 50% of the deal. So I have a 50-50 partner, Alex Kaufman. And if we can, uh, we're going to own 60% or more just because, like, you know, we're the operators. We manage these things. We asset management. Uh, we're on the loan, Right. Um, but we would do we would do smaller deals if if it made sense, like as far as like smaller percent equity. Yeah. So so if I'm a, a wholesaler and I'm in your area and I come to you with the deal and I've got no money, typically what percent do I do I get in that deal? As you know, I mean it really depends on how good the deal is, right? Right. Uh, I, I would if if just on that blanket statement, I would say probably. We'd want to give you, you know, 20, 25 at least. Yeah. And, and just so you know, this, um, it's evolving. Like it was, it started in Austin. Uh, now it's really all over Texas, but it's, it's growing to other states. Like we have a spreadsheet that we started uh, three weeks ago because the deals just started flowing a little bit more. We've got like 70 deals and they're, they're all kinds of stuff. And, and I think there's a niche. We're not going, uh, we would love, we'd love to do it. And we always will keep an open mind, but we're not really going for like hundred units, 200 units, as much as we're doing twenties and fifties and small mobile home park. And I think that there's this niche that gets overlooked. That's a little bit less competitive than the high end or just single family. And so we want to be the place where you bring these small, I, I typically say under 5 million commercial deals. And then we can figure out how to negotiate and structure them where it's a win-win for everybody. And, and when I say like, you know, deals that I haven't thought of, like, I think people think too much inside the box of real estate of like, what's typical earnest money or option money. And it's like, none of that matters. 
uh, we could, for example, uh, you know, if you if you try to get a loan with the bank, if you own more than 20 percent, you got to sign on the loan. Right. And maybe you don't want to do that. And so we could own uh, on, on paper, you could own 80 percent of the deal. Right. But like someone else gets 90 percent of the cash flow. And then 90% of the proceeds when you sell it, like you can structure things any way you want. There's not a, I, I try to like get people to break out of what's normal in real estate and just think business in general. And you can structure these deals and partnerships any way you want. And and like you could owner finance from somebody um, and you could, you could pay any price you want. I could pay triple the value of the property depending on the monthly payment and the interest rate. Right. And you yeah. got to the more you understand that, the more you can like just navigate and, and almost if there's somebody who's motivated, who needs a solution, I should be able to figure out something that works for all of us. I love your I love your heart, love your mindset. So obviously you stated that you're looking to hold these long term. I'm assuming there are certain deals where you just flip them and make the cash. But. Uh, what sort of cash flow do you need to make sense of holding it long term with these partners? Yeah, great question. Um, I really try to simple, simplify things. You know, the 1% rule, I'm sure. Uh -huh. I think yeah. about that often and every market's different. Like in, in Central Texas, you know, San Antonio's maybe a 2% market, Houston, maybe 2%. So I, I really want to be at a minimum 1%. But then the the other part of the equation is the equity, right? And so if we're breaking even on some deals, but there's a, a good amount of equity and there's ways to capitalize on the future, we'll do that. Uh, but I, if, if we're talking single family, um, ideally three, four hundred dollars a month in cash flow. If we're talking yeah. uh, big commercial, like million plus, you know, three, four thousand a month. It's just the same, same. Just keep it simple. Three hundred, you know, per hundred thousand per million, three thousand. Uh, break down the apartments, price per door, rent per door. Does it hit that 1% rule? Okay, it's interesting. And then you, then I try to look into what's the motivation? Why, what's the backstory? Why do I have this deal uh, as opposed to, you know, other people having this deal? And I toss out a lot of lines, lines in the water. And I mean, the biggest thing that I've found is is everything to me happens in the follow-up. Like the, the best deals that we're doing, man, they – it happened like six, eight, 12 months after we've started the original conversation. And I don't want to get a deal on the first conversation because then I'm like, man, I probably overpaid. 100%. Now, you, as you're accumulating a lot of properties, especially at even three to $400 of cash flow, that cash flow can get eaten up super quick if a tenant leaves or there's problems. I mean, talk to me about like the reserves. Like, how do you think about, you know, stacking enough capital to handle like, if, if something crazy happens. Yeah. That's where it comes back to the in and on focus, yeah. right? Is our brokerage is profitable and the brokerage is, it's interesting because it's like the engine that, that keeps everything going, but the real values in the ownership side. And so that's back to uh, agents joining and, and being part of us. It's like, we, we want to make money with you. You know, we do a 15 K cap on our commissions and, we try to give them a lot of support. We're not making uh, the real money there. That's sustaining us, but we're making the money on owning. And I don't have an exact metric for you as far as like percentage, but you know, broker just sitting on a, a decent amount of capital um, yeah. and not so much the properties. I mean, we're buying in, in Austin and in, in Central Texas. And so there's there's not a lot of cash flow. Like it is, like I said, I can't just retire. I mean, it's, it's hard to hang on to these. I mean, we'll get massive tax bills at the end of the year and it's a grind to figure out how are we going to sustain this? And so right now, thankfully we're sitting on a little bit of capital. Uh, but for the last like four or five years, I mean, it was just to the penny surviving, you know, we got to get this money. we got to scrape this together. we got to make this work. So Obviously, this thing's growing like crazy. I mean, I think you said you started the brokerage in 2020 or at 170 agents. That's a pretty crazy growth path for a brokerage. What is your view of the future? Like, what do you see this thing doing? Well, um, we've got this niche that my perspective is that 
you know, the only people that are doing what we're doing are just individual investors. And so if you found a deal, you're most likely, I'm making some assumptions here, but you're going to take this to like the three to five wealthy people, you know, and see how you can work the deal. We just want to be known for the the firm or the real estate company that you take it to uh, nationally, globally, right? But we're not trying to force that into existence in the sense of let's go plant a flag in New York and, and try to open up this model. What we're looking to do is is find people that resonate with this, that are in in real estate, that that totally get this. And and in my opinion. The people that want this and get it, they get it quickly and they just already know And because there's not a lot of options out there. Like if you're a new agent and and you want to own, like what brokerage do you go to that really is focused on this? I, I don't honestly don't know of any other than us, but like not everybody knows about us. You know, very only people in Austin and maybe in Texas. Um, there's a lot of great brokerages out there, but none of them truly will put up their balance sheet or sign on the loan as a brokerage, right? And so we're looking for people that get this, understand this, and it's a trammel crow type mentality of having partners all over the world that help build out the entrepreneurial vision with TRE. And uh, we just support them and uh, just have the, the backing and systems that we have to put in place, but also always keep a super open mind to how can this be better? And that's one of our core values is everybody works with us agents, even employees, you know, you don't work for us, you work with us and little tweaks, right? Like it's, uh, it's, it's, it actually like almost, I don't even know the word, but when brokers are like my agents, you know, I'm like, they're not my agents, right? I, I hate that term. Sounds weird to me. Uh, but we want to have just partners with, as agents, partners with people that we're meeting with, partners to help us grow the brokerage and just very aligned on what can we do together. And, and I've just found, like I said earlier, not being a team sport when you have the right people and it's not easy to, to get the right people and to structure these things, it will go wrong. Uh, but it's pretty amazing when you get trust, you know, rowing in the same direction and start acquiring real estate with multiple people, it, it can be a really special thing. How, how did this, philosophy develop was it you know reading books was it just in you the whole time how did you come to this i mean i think a lot of people when they start a business have like the vague notion of like man i want to treat people well i want this thing to go well etc but then but then the reality hits and business is hard and then you know they don't they don't quite live up to that yeah it's a mix of all of it i mean i definitely think it's it's in me i mean uh grew up around my mom doing it right um wanted to be great at it was always a really hard worker i grew up playing baseball i was uh i was good at baseball i wasn't great but i i worked really really hard and uh then i i like took that work ethic to real estate definitely a lot of books a lot of studying um competitive in nature of saying like i want to be the best at this and then it uh being kind of from other people being explained like this has changed my life. This is helpful. Like it, it being validated real time to say there is something here. There's something that is meaningful and impactful and that is, is probably being missed. So all those things together and then saying like, hey, this this is maybe a, a way that I can actually make a positive impact. Yeah. And I think too, like listening to your story, your mom not only laid an example that real real estate is good. But she didn't lay the foundation like a lot of gurus would, which this is the easiest thing in the world. You're going to make so much money so fast. It was, hey, this is just something you do. You grind on top of your job. And then when you wake up someday, it's going to be really good. Yeah, man. And, and she, uh, she's interesting because she had a good team. And so yeah. she, she acquired all these properties, but she didn't really know a whole bunch about it. She just knew like, save my money, trust this property manager and this contractor and put the money up. And so she wasn't really uh, even teaching anything other than by example. And so I just, I mean, literally, you know, single mom, uh, two boys, and she was up every day at four, go to work and I mean, hustled, right? And dude, she still works with us yet. In the last two days, she made 
uh, about 2000 call phone calls. Um, she's, she can retire. She's got grandkids. She doesn't need to work, but she wants to help us and she wants to work with us. And she's sitting there cold calling and, and getting told all kinds of negative things. And sometimes it, it affects her. Right. Um, so yeah. I have like a soft spot for that, but she wants to help us accomplish this. We have agents that I say, Hey, you know, you're having trouble. Like go sit down with my mom and she'll, she'll happily sit down with them the whole day. Um, but it's, it's outbound, 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 outbound until it becomes inbound and she's still hustling. So it's mostly just example leading by example. And I saw that, uh, we, it's not that, you know, she had 14 properties, uh, and by no means was she, you know, going on all these vacations every year or driving a super nice car. So like, I just saw what it was like. I saw what was required. I saw what it looked like. And I think that was a blessing because I feel like a lot of people, did they just sit there and analyze and they think like this deal has to uh, cash flow this way or it has to do this. And, and there's an element of that that's absolutely required and good. But in my opinion, you got to realize that one deal, two deals, five deals are not going to change your life by any means, at least immediately. And so just go do deals, right? And and that's obviously I said do the steals right now. So it depends on the market. But this, but when I say do deals, the steals are out there now. They weren't out there as much eight months ago, in my opinion. It was like a good deal is a great deal back then because if you found anything off market, there's probably a buyer that was willing to pay 10, 15% more just because it was hard to do something. Yeah. So I think... Uh, you got to stop overthinking of like the deal has to look this way and just do a deal. Just get going. What's your vision for your life and business next 12 to 18 months? Ideally, man, we, uh, so we, we started this entrepreneurial community and it was a way I'll give you my opinion. I honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but it was a way for other people to be involved with us, uh, that didn't have to have a, a license hanging with TRE. And so personally, and I understand the value, but I was never really big on, on the coaching, you know, the 15, 20 K a year type deal. Um, but I also, on the flip side, I was, I was willing and still am willing to basically give everything I have for free to anybody. Um, but we started this community, uh, it's a thousand dollars a year. It's a uh, weekly calls. It's a Facebook group. Hopefully the thousand, uh, can resonate to people that we're not making money off of that thousand, yeah, right? right? Committing to a year. Yeah. But what it does is it, it weirdly enough, it, it makes people committed to show up. And what we're after is doing deals with people. Yeah. Right. And so uh, we've got about 60 people there. There we're sharing deals. We're doing deals together and we want to grow that. Uh, that's cool yeah. because in brokerage, People have to pick a broker, you know, so you're kind of like, who do you pick? But with this is totally yeah. voluntary. So we want to grow the community of the brokerage. We want to grow the community of people that aren't licensed. And then we want to keep buying assets, but I'd love to find the right partners in every city, right. Um, to help build this out or maybe state, right. Just state by state. Like we need to be in California. We need to be in Florida. We need to be in Nevada. We need to be in the Northeast. Like, finding the right people that this all resonates and then we can go build this with them. Yeah. And with the community angle, it's really something where that that's not a licensed scenario, right? So if you have to build the license side first, it can get a little tricky, right? But if you could build communities of potentially unlicensed people across the country, then you could see ahead of opening brokerages places. Um, you could see which markets really respond well, et cetera. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. And it's like I said, I mean, I, it, I don't know how, if you, if you take this this way, but I, I kind of don't like the, Hey, it's a thousand bucks to come be involved with us, but it's the only thing that I've seen work. Like I've, I, I tell people they can be involved with me regardless. Uh, mm. But they end up just like, they'll do a deal. And you know, we, we just, they just did it. We never talked about it. I'm like, dude, I could have helped you sell that for, you know, 10 K more, but right. they're just in their own world. Whereas when they're in this community, all the deals are doing, we're talking about it and we're, we're working them together, whether we make money or not, that's not as relevant to me as like, 
am I, if I help you get what you want out of the deal, then I'll, we'll do more deals together. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I believe in, cause I've heard it from a few mentors and it's, it, it seems to play out like in the people that I coach and work with is like when people pay money, it becomes their accountability partner. And so there's like a certain element and like you kind of referenced it earlier, like when, when people pay a thousand dollars, they tend to show up more. I remember when I was coaching people in cold calls, it was like, they pay a thousand bucks a month. They would do what I'd say some of the time, right? They pay 2000 a month. They would do it most of the time. They pay 5,000 a month. They do it every time. Um, and, and so it's, um, yeah, I totally hear you, man. Like, so weird, I, right? I, I, what's that? I, I totally understand you. Cause we were doing, before we did this, we were doing like thousand bucks a month or, or 2000 for coaching and it never worked. No one yeah. ever really did anything. So, and I, we never did the 5,000, but I, I hear you. Well, and, and then, then it becomes a question of, okay, if, if someone's paying me $5,000, you have to provide an extraordinary amount of value right to them in that particular area to be able to make sense of it. Because I kind of view like coaching should be somewhere between one and 10% of somebody's PL, depending on where they're at in their business. And so if, if, if you're charging $5,000 a month, they, they should be doing at least $50,000 a month, if not $500,000 a month. And, and, and if someone's earlier in their journey, that's very, very difficult to do. And I mean, even if you're helping deploy a really big skill set for them. So it became this game of like, well, the amount that I have to charge to make to make them do the things that will actually get them successful is it can be prohibitive, um, you know, for for helping them grow their business. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I think as much as it's really nice to give everything away for free, I mean, people value what they pay for. Um, and so uh, kudos to you, man. I, I think if if a thousand dollars in your community is enough to get people to buy in and do the work, then. I mean, I think we're probably on the same page. The lowest amount you could charge and still get people to buy in is, is probably the right amount. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is maybe the thousand is not enough because, I mean, we've we've had people, dude, that have paid and they've literally never shown up once. And and I just care. I just care about what we're doing that I'm going to go check in with them. And, you know, we've already made the money, but yeah. like, and I'm not checking in with them to make it again. I'm checking in to, to do deals with people. But exactly. It's yeah. a weird deal. It is so well, weird. And that's, and that's the thing about it too, that, you know, like you're essentially, um, yeah. Okay. It's a thousand bucks, but that's basically nothing to you guys. Right. So it's like the thousand bucks is really to see them really blossom one, but two, the deals are where you make your real money. So if that's they're going to really help you. Right. That's what I'm saying. And, and the, the, uh, the thousands actually a loss if it's, if that's all it is. I mean, yeah. we're, we're for one year, every yeah. week, and I'm thinking about them right now. Do you want to check on them? Like maybe mm -hmm. making like 10 pennies an hour. I don't know. Right. And so uh, you're right. That's that's right. So like that's why it's a thousand is because we want to say we're not making money on this. We're going to make money on doing deals with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't I mean, I'm sure it's out there, but I just think most most programs are are not that by any means ours is better they're different but most of them i think they make their money on that fee which they're like you said you're providing a value for that which is great um ours is like we want to go look at properties with you we want to get on the call with brokers and i don't think there's many if any that are really like that yeah no i i agree with you it's very very i mean there are communities but it's it's very a lot of times they're niched down even within sub niches, you know, whether it be like land or, or certain types of uh, multifamily where, where the, again, the, the deal size is so big, but yeah, I totally agree with you. What you guys are offering, especially with the combination of the brokerage is very, very unique. Um, and I think people would be very, very uh, forge or like they should really consider taking a look at your model. Like if they live in Texas or want to do deals in Texas, they should definitely take a look at your model. Thanks, bro. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Matthew, thank you. thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing about your life and your business. Like, it's so cool to see the opposite of the get rich quick scheme, right? This is like work hard, love on people, do the right thing scheme, which is absolutely the way to go. If you want to build something big, if you want to build something that's going to last. So guys, write down something you learned from today. Maybe you're not in the right brokerage. Maybe you're not in the right place. Maybe you could take the principles from this. Maybe you're killing it where you're at and you want to install this type of model where you're at. Uh, maybe you just go ahead and start doing that or connect with Matthew. Maybe he can help you grow in your area. Uh, whatever it is, write down something you learned, share it with somebody you know so they can hold you accountable. This freedom is acquired one action at a time. And if you take steps day by day before you know you too, we'll be living a life of freedom. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode.